I've been waiting a long time for this one. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Okay, maybe only like four years, but that's still a long time. Huge shout out to Chris for making this happen. I recently put in one of my videos that I was looking for one of these very interesting Les Paul customs from 2017, and Chris emails me quite frequently, so this time when he says, I have your Moonless Night custom, and I will sell it to you, it's like, yes, yes, thank you. And for him saying that he's never packed and shipped a guitar before, I would say he did a fantastic job for the first time. So let's go ahead and learn about this very unique model known as the Moonless Knight. Wow, that is very in your face in person. <laughs> so the very first striking thing about this is the black primary binding. We still have the white in between layers, but our primary layer is black. So it kind of makes it look like the fretboard is unbound. It gives you a very interesting effect right around here. And in the late 2010s era of Gibson, they like to play around with black binding quite a bit. But I always thought this was just a really interesting custom because it's a little bit of a darker black than most black customs. And then they just have this very light metallic flake over across the entire thing. So they call it the moonless night because it's like there's no moon in the sky. You just kind of see the twinkle of the stars. And 2017 was a big celestial steel year, I guess you could potentially say, because they also did a Bales Paul Jr. that looked like this. It was called the Solar Eclipse. I would like one of those for my collection too. But for the Moonless Night, they had that finish across the top, the back. We've also got it on the sides here, and it's not like in your face sparkle. Just a few of them kind of have that shine to it. But as far as specs go, it is your standard 2017 Gibson Les Paul Custom. Nothing too fancy. And yes, that does mean we have a rich light fretboard on here. However, besides our unique finish and binding, there's one more claim to fame for the Moonless Night, is they put a little crystal on our headstock. It's kind of hard to see that it's any different at all. It's like a cubic zirconia crystal or something like that. It's not a real diamond like on the 1994 Centennial Year guitars, but it's something that makes it unique. It's not necessarily super standout-ish, but this is just kind of a cool custom, so I've always wanted one in my own personal collection. And now that you've seen one in this video, if you do want one, they're pretty rare. They only made 25 of these, and while the run did start in 2017, there are some 2018 serial numbers out there as well, which is just like this. And for me, 2018 is a really cool year for Gibson because it was the last full year of the Henry J era, and he just went crazy for that year with the limited editions, and that's kind of what sparked my channel because it was one of those videos that actually performed very well for me. Just talking about the limited edition Gibson models for that year, and that's when things like the modern Flying V were coming out, and when I reviewed that, that made people happy. So in a roundabout way, 2018 birthed my channel as far as documenting new guitars. But I had been doing older Gibsons probably like a year or two even before that. But what are my first impressions here seeing this for the first time in person? I guess I didn't really even know what to expect what this would be. It really just looks like they took a little bit of like shiny glitter flake and just danced it across the finish, then clear coated over top of it. As far as case and case candy go, you got the standard lift and reissue of the era. Bright pink interior with the brown exterior. We got a pick guard stock from the factory, should you choose to install it. I mean, I think it would look okay, but this is actually a lighter black than what's on the guitar, so it's kind of a weird mix match. Oh my goodness, Chris, this is a fantastic treat. Look what we have. The original shipping carton tag just cut off. I love it when people do this. So that was a real surprise. It's just not practical to keep the original box when you have a huge collection, but it's totally easy enough to slice off the shipping tag from the box, throw it in the case, and I wish everybody would start doing that. Because occasionally you'll find like a 70s or 80s guitar that still has the original box, but whenever I see a listing like that, it's like, ah, I don't want to have to keep that box for the rest of my life. Trust me, I went down that road for my first 25 50th anniversary guitar, and it ended up not even being the original box. But here's our COA booklet on this one. It's the nice brown style, and inside is our typical black. They just called it a Les Paul Custom, though, not Moonless Night on this paperwork anyway. Then our typical warranty pamphlet filled out, our back toggle switch plate if we don't want the medallion, and our case key. Then the other reason I wanted this thing in my collection is my daughter has a name very closely resembling the moon. So anything moon related, I usually have a soft spot for. So that's the true reason why I want one of these, because I think it's cool. And I'm sure my daughter will one day get this guitar. So without any further ado, let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs.
All right, inside the Moonless Night Les Paul Custom. So I guess another thing that's kind of special is the fact that it has chrome hardware. Most customs have gold stock from the factory, but just as the spec sheet said, it's a 490R in the neck, and our bridge position sports the 498T. But something interesting to note is actually the date on the pickups. It goes all the way to mid-May. So this was definitely one of the later made ones. But as far as the pickup cavity, we do have a long neck tenon on this model and nothing too defining in our bridge pickup route. And not that we can really see it, but it does still have a two piece maple top with a weight relieved mahogany body. So usually when they just say weight relieved on the spec sheet, it means the nine holes. Within the circuit, the bridge reads 13.57K ohms, and then the neck is 7.58 and the middle position just for fun, 4.86. The bridge is the regular Nashville style one. This is not a historic reissue or anything. It's just regular Les Paul custom. And it's a full weight tailpiece with the branding of Advanced Plating Incorporated. As I was telling you earlier, usually it's white, black, white, black, white, black. But this time it starts with the black layer. So you still have the whites in between and it just makes it look different. Another good example of a black binding Les Paul Custom was the Blackout series. I documented a cool custom color of that at one point. But you can find black binding on a Gibson as far back as the 70s. The white Les Paul recordings is probably the most famous example of that, but then you have like the white Les Paul Artisan as well. Which again, if anyone has one, let me know. I'm gonna keep bringing it up because I, I've been getting lucky lately mentioning models and then somebody goes, oh yeah, I've got one, I'll sell it to you. As another feeler, I want an ice flame from 2018. Because those things were just ridiculously cool. And I generally don't like those over the top fancy guitars. It's just because it was from 2018. But something that's kind of interesting in this area is look where the light is reflecting. Maybe there's more flakes of this underneath the black paint. I'm not entirely sure. As far as our knobs go, we've got the black speed knobs. They blend in perfectly with the theme of this one. But moving on from the body, we have a mahogany neck with once again the rich light fretboard. Now there's a lot of guys out there that hate rich light, but I've just kind of grown accustomed to it to be honest. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but I don't shun guitars that have it simply because Gibson does not currently use this on very many models. Occasionally, you'll still find it on like a Guitar Center exclusive here or there. Outside of that, they typically don't use this. So in like 20, 30 years, this could be like an anomaly, like somebody wants a Rich Light fretboard just because it's a little bit different. Rich Light reigns supreme from about mid 2011 until early 2019. And if you've got a Rich Light board that needs cleaned, you're just supposed to use a damp cloth with water. Now, if you accidentally put lemon oil on here or something, is it gonna be the end of the world? No, but Rich Light's website says just to wipe it down. But regardless of how you feel about the fretboard material, we still do have our mother of pearl inlays, so that's looking nice. And if you shine a light on it, you can see you do have the black fret nibs and you also have the black binding. Very hard to see when you do that with a black board, but hey, it's there. If only in this era, when they did black binding, they did something similar to this and gave it an extra white stripe right here just to outline the edges of it, that's when those boards look really cool. As far as neck specs, the nut measures 1.69 inches, and that increases to 2.05 by the 12th. First fret neck depth is 0.86 and 0.96 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the first and 12th fret. Essentially just a medium C-shaped neck. Not huge, not tiny, just right in between. And this might just be because of the black binding and it having white side marker inlays. They just seem larger than normal. They really stand out on this guitar because they're bigger than the flakes and they pop against the black. It's kind of a cool look. The same thing's true for the edge of the guitar. I like the fact that the binding doesn't have any white at top. Like that would have been cool too, but the whole pitch blackness on the top and bottom where it's just having all these stars gives it an interesting vibe. So the longer I have this, the more and more I like it. As far as our headstock, they could have went really crazy and gave it a matching one, but I like what they did here. To tie in the whole moonless night theme, they kind of have this big star, or you could view it as the moon, and like all the stars disappear up here. But that whole straight black with the black binding and just the double pinstriped outline looks very attractive to me, especially with the chrome hardware. But you just have your regular Gibson logo outside of the dot and your custom emblem 
And the crystal actually is proud on the headstock, so be careful that you don't accidentally ding that thing off. But our truss rod's looking fine, and the truss rod cover just reads Les Paul Custom. Moving on to the back here, we can see the inside of our control cavity. It's just your standard Gibson branded pots, and you can see the finish all the way through on the back side of the maple top. This really is a cool guitar in person. Photos never really did it justice for the most part. It truly does look different at every angle that you see it. Like sometimes there's not too many sparkles, but you can just barely see them like stars in the sky. Other times they're a little bit more fully illuminated. I'm sure in stage lights, this would actually be a pretty cool custom. In fact, on the actual dealer sheet at the very top, it says stage light meet starlight. And in case you're curious, they use the thin binding in the cutaway on this example. We have that whole textured finish phenomenon here on the back, but I think on the back it is just the mahogany wood grain showing through, slightly mixed with the same textured finish that they were doing on the top. But moving up the back of the neck, I did find like a small patch of scratches back here, but thankfully my scratch remover was able to get rid of that. So I'll say this one's about as clean as you can find. But I also started to think, what happens when the clear coat starts to yellow? I mean, is this still going to look good? Because you'll have the whole blackout effect, but instead of silver stars, you'll have like slightly yellowish ones. <laughs> It'll be like a sunset night or something. And imagine this headstock yellowed over just in the clear coat. I don't think that crystal is actually going to age so maybe it will become the focal point of the whole piece once they start to yellow but here we have our custom shop serial number dating it to 2018 1734th guitar in production for that particular year All said and done, it's not too bad on the weight side of things. It's 9 pounds, 11.5 ounces. So let's go ahead and hear how the Moonless Night Custom sounds. <laughs> Pretty nice, clean sounding guitar, really overdriving my amp, especially that bridge pickup. That was demoing it at nine. Here it is at full on 10. has like an EMG like presence to it. It's got a lot of punch to it, but it's ultra clear. In the middle, a combination of both. Let's go ahead and kick on some dirt.
Yeah, those are some pretty rockin' pickups. But it's really that neck pickup once again stealing the show. I love how fat it is. Now that we know all about the Moonless Night Les Paul Custom, what are my final thoughts on this thing? It's a very interesting color scheme. Even if you don't like it in the photos, I still think if you get the opportunity to check one out in person, you might like it because a lot of the beauty from this one comes from like the playing standpoint where you can see these obnoxiously large white dots right here and how the pure black binding really does contrast very well against the speckled finish. You just can't do justice with photos and it's just such a really cool piece. So everybody say thank you Chris down in the comments section because I'm really happy that he sold me this because it's never leaving my collection because it's just that cool. So maybe not one for everyone and yeah, it's pretty much just a regular Les Paul custom with a fancy finish and a giant inlaid crystal on your headstock. Which, by the way, it does mess with your peripheral vision right there because it protrudes outside of the headstock. It definitely catches your attention while you play it. But if nothing else, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you really enjoyed this finish on a Les Paul Custom, why don't you check it out on a Fender Made in Japan JP Bass? Yeah, confusing name, but it's a signature. Check it out here.